Today I'm walking you through how I set up my Nikon Z6 mirrorless camera. Welcome to my Z6 setup tutorial. This is a bit of an abridged version that there are a lot of things you can learn, but this is what I do when I first get a camera right out of the box. And this really is cross platform for all Nikon cameras, which is kind of cool. The menu systems across the board are really consistent. So what we have up here is this my Atomos uh, recorder. So all I'm doing is recording the screen with this. So uh, don't worry about this. We're gonna go inside the camera here and I'm gonna tell you all the things that I changed to get set up in under five minutes. The first thing that I do when I get a new camera is I set it to JPEG plus also raw. I just use normal, so I just use JPEGs as a backup as well as the JPEGs that actually come off of this camera. If, if you find yourself using them a lot through SnapBridge and loading them to your phone, it probably makes sense to switch up to something like JPEG Fine. If you find yourself usually editing from the raw files, which I do, um, I simply just use the JPEG as backup, uh, kind of an offsite that at least I have something saved if I lose my camera or whatever it might be. So that is the first thing that I change. The second thing that I change is I actually go into file naming here and I name it something that's a little more appropriate. This is my ninth Nikon camera um, and it's gonna reset, I guess. So the next one's gonna be back to zero. Um, and in here, I basically just want my file names, uh, the, the video file names as well. We shoot with multiple cameras a lot, so I wanna be able to know what I shot on my camera, what Marshall shot on his camera for the show, and what Tim shot on his camera for the show. It makes things a lot easier just having those file names. You can also add your copyright information if you want those to be embedded into your photo files. There's not a whole lot else that I touch in the actual uh, photo shooting menu. I come down here to make sure that everything is recording 14-bit raw, and I'm fine with using compression. I've done the test and I can't really tell um, the the differences, so I'm happy to use lossless compress to at least save a little bit of space. Uh, picture control, I'm fine to leave it on auto. If you find that you're just shooting only landscapes, it makes sense to just select the landscape profile. I'll use monochrome a little bit if I'm out there and I just wanna be able to see my compositions and uh, lighting a little bit better. But other than that, for pictures, I usually just leave that alone. Another thing that I do that might not be the popular opinion is I actually add a lot of D-lighting. So I go in here and I add D-lighting to high. I wanna see, basically what D-lighting does is it brings those highlights down and it bumps the shadows up a little bit. So just for your JPEG and when you're viewing your JPEG, it just looks, the best it possibly can before you edit. So especially if you're sending things to your phone to be posting from there, um, it's definitely an important thing for me at least to have on. Experiment and decide if it's for you or not. All right, that's all I touch in the photo shooting menu. Now coming into video mode, I set everything to 60 frames a second. So I shoot everything just regular HD at 60p, which is 60 frames a second, which means that you're able to slow things down and go into slow motion if required. Uh, if you find yourself somebody that wants to use more frames or somebody that you're just always using 24 frames a second, it makes sense to record at that. We just record everything at 60 because we like to slow things down. And we tend to forget to change the frame rate whenever we find ourselves in a situation. So we know if we're in a situation that we're gonna need 120 frames a second or 60, and 60 is just the default that we leave it at. Movie quality, always high. Some of the cameras come set to normal. Um, I just recommend always recording on high quality movies. I'm fine with an MOV file type. Coming down here, I wanna set this to standard. Um, you can also just whatever your photo setting is. I am just happy to have this on standard just in case I'm recording multiple video clips and for whatever reason the camera's reading the scene a little bit different because I'm pointed in a slightly different direction. So I wanna set that to standard just to make sure that everything is the same and then I can go into color correction afterwards. Active delighting again on video, I set this to high. Maybe this is a more risky uh, thing to do because it's just baked into the file, but I think that I like the look of it. So um, I, I basically do everything that I can to shoot everything exactly correct in camera, especially for video. If I have an external microphone plugged in, I will change this to manual. I always do manual audio settings. Moving down here into the settings. Uh, I don't do a whole lot within here. One thing that I do, do is I come in here into customize menu and I'm gonna just take one of these and I'm gonna change it from like flash mode, which is not something that I ever use. I rarely ever use a flash. Um, and I'm gonna move it to something that's a little more useful for me. Uh, there's a lot of settings in here that are actually helpful. And I'm gonna put choose image area. On my wedding camera, I actually have this choose image area set to one of the front buttons so I can easily change from DX mode to FX mode, which basically when I'm recording video, it gives you the same HD frame at 60 frames a second, but it gives you a little bit of extra reach. So in this case, I'm on a 24 to 70. When I get to the end of that 70, if I wanna go into DX mode to get 70 times 1.5, uh, I'm able to do that and still get the HD video. If you do that in photo mode, you actually lose a little bit 
of resolution. So be cautious of that. But as far as wedding days go, I'm kind of happy to shoot a smaller megapixel file to make sure that I get the frame that I want. You could also just crop this in post, but again, going back to getting everything correct as you can in camera, I like to just kind of whatever frame I'm gonna crop to, if I can just shoot that in the camera, I would way rather do that. Another really cool thing is the way it sets up the front buttons here. So I would map these front buttons, the top one here to white balance anyways, and it comes like that default. And I would map this bottom one to my autofocus control. So going from AFS, the front wheel will change the size of your box here or set it to just kind of full face recognition, um, which is what it's doing here. And then the back changes between AFS to manual focus to AFC and AFF if you're on video mode. That concludes my quick setup on this Nikon Z6. The cool thing with all Nikon cameras is that the menu system is really consistent. So this is the same way that I would set up my Nikon D780 or my D850 or my Nikon Z6. So I hope that you enjoyed. And if you haven't checked out this week's episode of the show, be sure to do that. There's a link in the description below and I hope that you have a lovely day.